Just how far would you go for a flawless photo? Accidents becoming more frequent, sometimes deadly. A 21-year-old woman died in San Pedro, California, when she plunged off a cliff near Point Furman after trying to get a better view for a picture. One woman and two teenagers are lucky to be alive after a selfie almost turned fatal in Brazil. Authorities in Thailand say tourists are putting their own lives at risk by taking pictures of low-flying planes and themselves. Bouldering teen takes selfie and falls 100 feet to his death. His final photo is a reminder that even the most experienced must cede to the mountain. Before we get started, here's a warning, so listen. What you're about to watch contains images and videos that some of you are going to find disturbing. So if you think that might apply to you, now's the time to go watch something else. And another thing, don't attempt to recreate any of what you're about to see or hear. These stunts are all stupid, dangerous, and they may result in a very painful, agonizing death. Consider yourself warned. Kick me in the head! I think I got that on film! It happens fast, I know. But when you slow the video down and look at it more closely, you can clearly see this young man, who thought it'd be cool to tape himself standing next to a speeding train, being given a boot to the head by the conductor. What's your take on it? Does this conductor's behavior serve as a good wake-up call, or is it grounds for an assault charge? Stick around and we'll see what the wannabe daredevil has to say for himself at the end. Right now, I feel we ought to kick this off with a quick intro to a controversial pastime that's been faithfully claiming lives for over a decade. Teen Vogue defines a selfie death as a death of an individual or a group of people that could have been avoided had the individual or individuals not been taking a selfie. Data on selfie-related deaths are hard to collect for numerous reasons, but one of the most recent studies conducted in 2021 states that from 2008 to 2021, there have been 379 selfie-related deaths worldwide. The number of those injured was even higher. An extreme selfie, a.k.a. a kill fee, is defined as a selfie taken in an extremely dangerous situation, possibly resulting in the death of the selfie taker. The biggest problem is that over the last decade, the death by selfie toll has only continued to rise. Transport is one of the top three causes of selfie-related deaths, as is falling from heights and drowning. It's also the focus of today's installment. Hard to believe, but train track photography has become a thing, a dangerous trend. People are doing it across the country. There's the celebrity fitness expert from Bravo, Greg Plitt, who died during a promo shoot. He had posted videos of workouts on the tracks before. This Hollywood movie went on location in rural Georgia for a dramatic opening sequence for the film Midnight Rider, leading to real life terror on the trestle. Watch as this train unexpectedly swept across the bridge, leaving little room for the actors to escape and killing one camera assistant left behind. First up, a man was severely injured after he was hit by a moving train while he was taking a selfie video on his phone. He was later admitted to a hospital in Hyderabad's Lingampalli. This accident, uh, as you can see on your television screens, is caught on tape. This man standing next to the railway track trying to take a video, a selfie video. The man you just saw starring in that homemade video is known as, quite simply, Mr. Siva. He's a gym trainer from India, and as you can clearly see, even as a speeding train approaches, even as it honks its horn loudly numerous times, Mr. Siva, the gym trainer, makes no attempt to get out of the way. What he does instead is mind-boggling. He stands there as the train zips by, just allowing himself to get hit. On the video clip, we can only watch in horror as the train smacks Siva hard in the head. He finally loses his grip on the phone, and we watch as it flies to the ground while recording a bunch of blurry nonsense. Believe it or not, Siva didn't have a death wish. He was just trying to capture what he thought would be an awesome video selfie. As was reported by the BBC, the man, quote-unquote, ignored warnings from a person nearby and the train driver while filming near Borabanda railway station. 
This event took place on January 21st, 2018. Mr. Siva survived the incident, but according to the South Central Railways Police, he did suffer some head injuries. He also had to appear in court because of his participation in the stunt, and in the end he was ordered to pay a fine of 500 rupees, the equivalent of 7 U.S. dollars and 87 cents. Ha ha. In the end, it could be said that Mr. Siva was definitely one of the lucky ones. That's more than can be said for the majority of our cases today. Now that you've got a handle on the basics, let's have a look at some eerie final photos and the even more tragic stories behind them. The top three nations with the highest number of selfie-related deaths are, in order, India, the United States, and Russia. For whatever reason, India leads all other countries by a staggering margin. For example, out of the 127 worldwide selfie deaths that occurred between March 2014 and September 2016, 76 out of those took place in India. That's well over 50%. A majority of the victims are said to be young men, and even more interesting is the fact that a majority of these selfie deaths in India involve trains. Hemank Lamba, a Ph.D. student and researcher at Carnegie Mellon in Pennsylvania, has attributed this to their belief that, quote, posing on or next to train tracks with their best friend is regarded as romantic and a sign of never-ending friendship. Four college students out in India stopped their car as they saw a train approaching in the distance. They wanted photos of themselves on adjacent set of tracks as the train whizzed by. What they didn't see, however, was another train coming on the tracks they were standing on. One of the four boys, he managed to escape just barely and said he witnessed the death of his three friends as they were just realizing that they needed to get off the track. The boy who survived said their goal was to get as close to the train as possible and then upload the photos to social media. While the romantic allure of the train track selfie is not nearly as widespread in other countries, people still seem to be drawn to the idea no matter where in the world you go. Another country that experienced a pretty serious train selfie death epidemic of their own was Russia. Let's have a look at just one tragic case that took place when one day a group of Russian schoolchildren decided to go wandering along the tracks of the famous Trans-Siberian Rail Line. Remember that some of the upcoming images are not for the faint of heart. On June 10th, or 11, 2017, near the port city of Vladivostok, five children who all attended school number six in Novi Village went walking along the Trans-Siberian Railway nearby. It isn't clear whether they went there with the intention of taking selfies or whether that idea just came at the spur of the moment. Either way, it didn't matter. With this having become a trend among kids in Russia at some point, four of them would decide to lie down on the tracks, hoping to capture the ultimate selfie. The victims were Sergei Zembaktin, Vladislav Koroshinkin, and Anya Kvatova, all 13 years old, and Sergei's younger sister, Ustinya, age 10. Another 13-year-old, Lera Sengevskaya, was also there soon to become an unwitting witness to something straight out of a horror movie. Lara would later tearily tell reporters how, when she saw the oncoming train approaching from a distance, she immediately shouted to warn her four friends, who had nestled themselves onto the tracks. As she confessed to a local news outlet, I was yelling at them, Stop! Get away! But she adds tragically that they didn't hear me. Upon realizing that no one was getting up, Lara did the next best thing in attempt to try saving her friends from impending death. As the media reports, she heroically grabbed onto Anya's hand and tried to pull her off the tracks and toward her. Unable to fight back her tears, Lara says, I managed to grab Anya, but she still was hit by the train. She also adds the following. When I ran to Sergei, he was already not breathing. When I ran to Anya, she was breathing. I pleaded with her not to die. On average, it takes a train traveling at 55 miles per hour over one minute before it can come to a complete stop. This varies depending on the type of train and other things, but regardless, by the time the conductor spotted the children and applied the emergency brake, it was already much too late. Ustinya, Sergei, and Vladislav were all killed immediately, 
in a particularly gruesome display. One of the victim's bodies was sliced right in half. It was also said that bits of human organs had to be picked out of the surrounding shrubbery and placed into a plastic bag. The roar of the engine follows the train. The sound surprisingly quiet as it speeds toward you. And the tracks are narrower than the train itself, making it hard to judge safe clearance. Anya, the girl who had been pulled off the tracks by her friend, had been hit by the train, but was still alive. She was quickly taken to the hospital, where she was last reported to be in quote-unquote grave but stable condition. Frighteningly enough, the totally pointless deaths of these three young children were only the latest three of six selfie deaths to occur near those same tracks during just that week alone. Following that latest incident, some would openly point the finger at inadequate parental supervision, with at least one local blasting parents for, quote, not warning their children strongly enough to avoid such deranged selfies, according to the Siberian Times. Given the nature of how social media works, it's not a big surprise that even trends like snapping photos in front of moving locomotives can spread across the globe quickly, with residents of the United States certainly not being immune. This photo is the last photo that three teens and friends from the town of Spanish Fork, Utah, would sadly ever take before seeing their lives abruptly and unpredictably cut short in a tragically preventable accident. It was one Saturday evening in October 2011 that a status update would show up on 13-year-old Savannah Webster's Facebook feed. The message, accompanied by a photo of Savannah, better known to her friends as Just Savvy, and two other teen girls, showed it had been sent from her mobile phone, and it read simply as follows. Standing right by a train, ahaha, this is awesome. What happened instants later, at approximately 6.40 p.m., near a small community called Covered Bridge, would inspire friends to respond not with likes and happy-faced emojis, but rather with sad faces and comments like the following. Wish you didn't. I love you. If only you realized how unawesome this is right now, and wish you guys wouldn't of. The three girls pictured in the photo were Kelsey Webster, age 15, her friend Essa Ricker, also 15, and of course, Savi, who was Kelsey's younger sister. They had evidently known about the one train they stood posing before, but they hadn't anticipated the other train coming from the opposite direction. Nor did they seem to notice it even as it approached, or even as engineer Michael Anderson blasted the horn. They were in their own little world, train conductor John Anderson, no relation to Michael Anderson, would later say in an interview. Even with the emergency brake having been applied, John would later describe how both men had no choice but to watch in horror as they got closer. He states that, quote, We saw them for about 12 seconds until they disappeared from our sight and the train continued moving forward. End quote. Both men have their own memories, but both seem to have remained haunted by what they saw. Michael admits he still has vivid nightmares about the event. According to GodUpdates.com, Michael saw blonde hair and jackets blowing in the wind. He also has stated that, quote, unquote, what happened was very intense, and I have to carry it the rest of my life. An investigation into the accident could not determine exactly what happened, but it is believed that the girls were hit by at least one train. Some theorize that they may have been bounced back and forth between both trains. A quarter of a mile down the road, once the train had finally stopped, John booked it back to the scene. It was there that he realized only one of the three teens, Savannah, was still alive. As he would tell reporters, I told her everything would be okay, and she relaxed a little. At that time, John states he believed this was true, and that the young girl would in fact pull through. He waited with her until the paramedics arrived and subsequently rushed her to Primary Children's Medical Center. She had suffered over a dozen broken bones, blood clots, internal bleeding, a severe brain injury, and she would abruptly undergo surgery. Except that in spite of all efforts made to save her, three days later on a Tuesday, Savannah too would be pronounced dead at the hospital. 
Her mother, Jaina Webster, who was also the mother to Kelsey, would issue a statement declaring that her daughter's brain injuries had just been too severe for her to recover from, adding that it was time to say goodbye to, in her own words, an angel that walked among us. Deuces! Ooh, hey girl! OMG, sick selfie! In response to the rise in train track accidents such as the one we just discussed, Union Pacific put out a series of ads just like the one you just saw, the hope being, of course, to try and make people more aware of the dangers of taking selfies on or around train tracks. Other nations had, even prior to this, been making active attempts to deal with the problem faced in their own towns and cities. But right now, we have another story this time out of Maryland. These photos you see now are among the very last photos 16-year-old John DeReggie would take, moments before he was hit by a train and died. You could say that the tragedy was all set in motion one Sunday afternoon when John, also known as John John, his girlfriend and his girlfriend's twin sister, the photographer, took off to take some pictures down by their local train tracks. John John's mother says the photos were intended to be for an innocent school project. But even so, Mom now says she deeply regrets ever giving her son permission to go. According to CBS News, it was, quote, all part of a photography class project to take inspirational photos filled with metaphors of youth and the pathway yet to come. The irony couldn't be more overwhelming. In some sense, these final photos really do portray a certain fleeting youthful innocence. Except surely nobody there or anywhere would have guessed just how fleeting it would all be for young John. According to the two survivors and sole witnesses to the event, John's girlfriend and her sister, it had been a very close call. None of them had seen the train coming. According to the girls, they themselves had only just barely been able to move out of the way on time. John, unfortunately had not been so lucky. As the 200-ton Amtrak, which had been traveling over 70 miles per hour, struck, barreled over, and crushed the poor teen boy's body, suffice it to say, just like that, he was gone. For Christine de Reggie, John's mother, everything stopped when she received a call from her son's girlfriend, who was screaming and crying into the phone. Everything changed, and he's never coming home again. About the accident, Christine would later tell the news that, quote, The train apparently is much wider than the tracks, and I don't know how far he jumped to try and clear it, but he didn't clear it, end quote. In the aftermath of her loss, Christine still appears to be grieving. She admits that she now sleeps in her son's bedroom because it smells like him, but it also seems like she's found ways to look at the positive side of things as well. Rather than serve as a painful reminder of John John's final moments alive, Christine says of the photos, the moments before my son died are beautiful. He's at peace and he's happy. You can see it's just them doing a sweet project together. As different as each of these events have been, be it a group of young children in Russia, a group of teens in the U.S., or a gym trainer in India, there seems to be one thing that each and every one of these cases all have in common. Why didn't any of the victims hear the train coming? It almost isn't too hard to understand why some people don't feel like there's much of any danger when it comes to walking alongside, or even right down the middle of, a set of train tracks. There's a couple things we come to learn about trains in our lives. Trains are big. Trains are loud. Surely, one would imagine, surely you're going to see a train coming long before you get hit by it. If there's one thing I hope viewers take away from this video, it's the strange but real fact that, no, it may not be as simple as all that. For each of the stories you just heard, you can easily find a dozen more just like them. In case after case, people are getting hit by trains and killed, in scenarios where one might be likely to swear that, if it had been me, I would have heard that train coming. This is exactly the way Jeff Rawson, a national investigative correspondent for America Today, used to feel about it as well. According to an Australian news outlet, Rawson, quote-unquote, came under fire recently after taking a picture of his children on train tracks. In his own words, Rawson states, 
I never thought about it. I always thought I'd see a train coming. I mean, it is a train after all. He then adds, but I still looked into it, and boy was I wrong. The simple truth is people are not able to get out of the way in time. You can never judge a train speed. It's an optical illusion. Once the engineer decides to put the train in emergency and he's seen you, it's too late. Rawson set out to conduct his own little experiment just to see how close a train could get to him before he would be able to hear it. The results were very surprising. He waited beside a track with his back turned, listening to hear the train approach. The locomotive was just behind him when he finally heard its engine, proving he would have only had a small time frame in which to escape its clutches. Rawson himself would admit, following the experiment, that, quote unquote, they are really quiet for as big as they are, and he concludes that, quote, you just don't have time to jump out of the way, end quote. It seems like a consensus of sorts has been reached. It's darn near impossible to hear oncoming train while standing on or near the tracks. But still, why is this? Is there a scientific explanation? What accounts for such a bizarre and, for a lot of us, unanticipated phenomenon? Turned out, I'm not the only person to ever have asked this question. Because Paul Montgomery, a retired electrical engineer, had an answer for Quora readers. As he explains, most of the noise a train makes is radiated to the side of a train. The front engine of a train blocks most of the little noise protecting forward, so really the locomotive is what you hear from an oncoming train. If the engine is not under any load, coasting, the noise is very small right in front of a train. To help clarify Paul's explanation, which for the record turns out to be on point, when he says locomotive, he refers to the engine of the train, and not the train itself. In which case, if one thinks about it, the diminished sound of an engine, which the manufacturers actively strive to make as quiet as possible, can be very darn difficult to detect. Second, what the poster means by the train not being under any load does not refer to a train that is not carrying a load. Rather, it simply refers to any time that a train is not operating on any kind of steam or electrical power, or as Paul intended to say, when it is not coasting under a cord of its own gravity alone. Examples would be, perhaps, when a train is accelerating or pulling itself up an incline. Other sources concur, and there are in fact more factors at play that one might originally imagine, as evidenced by one popular mechanics article entitled How Trains Can Be Silent Killers, which details the way that everything from earbuds to the Doppler effect to terrain for example, trees, can work to suppress the noise of an oncoming train. David Rangel, who at the time was the director at a training school for future train engineers, explained to popular mechanics that trains nowadays travel across their respective rails using a very minute amount of friction, stating that at age 62 he could push a train car down a track. His point, of course, being that, quote-unquote, you won't hear it or feel it. According to the Federal Railroad Administration, or FRA, quote, the average rail car traveling at 50 miles per hour measures in decibels between a loud voice and a shout. Given all this information and more, it is no wonder why trains seem to have a tendency to sneak up on those they run over. But one more question remains. What about the horn? Conductors and engineers involved in accidents have been said to punch their horns to try and get people's attention, and all to no avail. The simple answer to this is that not only do trains project their sound to the sides, as we already discussed, but our ears may seem to do something similar when it comes to what they decide it is important for us to hear. One source explains that when one is walking down a set of tracks away from an oncoming train, the individual will be unlikely to hear even the sound of a blaring horn. The more the individual would be to, say, pivot toward the train, the more they would be able to hear, but they would still hear very little. In most cases, it would be so little that unless the person actually turned to look, they would be apt to believe that the train was, in fact, a very far, far distance away. It is quite the illusion, indeed.
and it is all the more reason never to think that your ears alone will have you covered, should you ever find yourself battling it out with an oncoming train. Should anyone be interested in learning more about this strange phenomenon, especially the question as to why sometimes the sound of trains' horns can only be heard at night, I will leave a link in the description section to an in-depth, highly scientific explanation for that. Well, friends, as you already know, all good things must come to an end, and sadly, this video is no different. The good news is that if you enjoyed it, then you might want to like and also subscribe because you're bound to enjoy episode 2. You'll see a teenage girl accidentally livestream her own tragic end. You'll hear of how one tiny mistake causes yet another teen in quest of capturing that ultimate selfie to burst into flames instead. You'll also get to see the damage it does to an aircraft when the pilot is so busy taking selfies that he forgets to fly the plane. And that's only to name a few. Now, before we call it a wrap, I'd promised I would let you know whatever happened of this guy. Ha! Huh. Now how can anyone forget this face? It turns out the kid actually has a name, besides just Resident Clown, and his name is Jared Michael. This video was taken back in 2015-ish when he was vacationing in Peru while in his early 20s, I believe. After he posted it on YouTube, the video went viral, and Jared got quite a bit of attention for it, and as he claims, quite a number of death threats as well. While I don't get why anyone would wish the guy dead, I am curious about one thing. Did our boy Jared ever come to learn his lesson, or does he still believe, as was reported early on, that he wasn't doing anything remotely dangerous at all. As it happens, Jared has another video he made, entitled, Kicked in the Head Explained. I figure he can probably explain what was going on in his head a lot better than I can, so let's just roll a few highlights from that video. <laughs> I've obviously never had a video go viral like this before, uh, so to be thrown into this whole internet celebrity thing has been just insane for me. I was backpacking through South America, more specifically Machu Picchu in Peru, and I didn't even know a train went down those tracks. I figured that would be way too dangerous with the amount of tourists that are walking beside the tracks and on the tracks and all that. So the next day, I walked up to Machu Picchu, and it was amazing. You guys have to go. So I walked down Machu Picchu and walked on those same train tracks for the next two hours back. About an hour and a half into walking down these tracks, the train showed up behind me coming in my direction. So I thought to myself, I'm going to step off the tracks and kind of take a video of me standing off the tracks at a safe distance for about like 30 seconds while this like train kind of comes behind me and then just appears going really slow honking its horn and that would be that. So as you guys know, that's not obviously what ended up happening. What ended up happening is I saw the train about 100 meters away and thought I had a lot of time to film. So I pulled out my camera and as I was stepping off the tracks, it turns out the train was going normal train speed. And by the time I took out my camera to press play, the train was there to kick me in the head. It was pretty stupid, obviously. Um, I'm lucky not to have gotten hit by the train. All in all, it was pretty dumb of me. I really hope the conductor's seen it. If I met him, I would definitely buy him a beer. Uh, on a train, you see this dumb tourist that, uh, walking way too close to the tracks, and it's like, who wouldn't stick their leg out and kick them in the head? I almost died, I didn't, and now we know for next time that selfies kill. Nicely said, Jared. I don't think we could have picked a better note to end this on. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, as always.